we are at the Ravenella Hotel in the northern part of Mauritius. And in this edition, we're not going to talk specifically about the hospitality industry or the hotel industry. But we're going to talk about technology. Everything is related to technology nowadays. Hotel industry, of course, banking, manufacturing, everything. We are going to talk about Industry 4.0. We're going to see how Internet of Things, blockchain, it's everywhere. Now, 4.0. This is a concept where team synthesis lay much emphasis on. And they're talking about what's going to take a new revolution and how it is going to affect many industries and, of course, institutions like universities, for example. How training is going to be done around that. And we're going to see people who are here gathered to talk about Industry 4.0 and to see how they can make recommendations and how they can see how people are going to adapt around Industry 4.0. And Mauritius, with the ambition of becoming a cyber island, cannot escape that. So we're going to see with people from different spheres, from different industries, how they're going to adapt to Industry 4.0. Mr. Chipeng Tang, so you are the CEO of Team Synthesis, which is organizing this uh, important conference on Industry 4.0. When we talk about Industry 4.0, Internet of Things, where machines are communicating with each other, we get the impression we're talking about this film Matrix, where machines have taken control of the human's life. Now, is that real? Is it what we're talking about? How do we make sure that humans still have control over things happening here around us? I think Matrix uh, probably is a very good um, example how things can go very wrong in Industry 4.0. But I think we will not have the pleasure to come to the stage because humans will be far gone before even that happens. Why? Because Industry 4.0 has this special attribute as compared with the previous three um, revolutions. We have the first industrial revolution where mechanization that helped tremendously, relieving human from uh, mundane, thankless tasks. Then come the second uh, revolution where things are being mass produced. Therefore, it becomes affordable and therefore it pump up the level of affordability and therefore the society or the societal class changes. Then come the uh, industrial revolution in the early 70s and where IT automation happened, right? Uh, and in many ways, our society, uh, not only Mauritius, but Singapore and Malaysia, we are still stuck in time dimension of Industry 2.5 to Industry 3.0. But Industry 4.0 is a different kettle of fish altogether. Uh, the distribution feature is it combines, it integrates, it changes the way we interact, we live, we work, we think, and we socialize. Uh, it changes in an exponential manner over exponential time. That means it's very fast, right? And it, it promotes something called the digital space, the digital economy, the digital enterprises, the digital learning, the digital employee, whatever digital you have, digital twin in manufacturing, if you may. So, the implication of uh, Industry 4.0 is very damning. It's up to you to look at it, whether the, water, the glass of water is half full or half empty. Either way, you're right. Now, if you choose to look at it as half full, you'll become optimistic. And this is the purpose of this uh, particular conference, where we are doing our very best to get the 150 organizations attending this conference to prepare a plan. And uh, three weeks down the road, we are going to conduct a masterclass. All this has been very well crafted and very well planned because this is what required to address the challenges in Industry 4.0. So we're talking all this revolution which is coming with technology. Now we know the next generation will be full-fledged, full swing in this kind of industry, Industry 4.0, and maybe there will be Industry 5.0. Now how to get them prepared for this? Believe it or not, uh, some organizations in Mauritius already have pockets of excellence in Industry 4.0, right? For example, in the financial services, fintech 
is Industry 4.04 Financial Services. Now, the challenge is this. Um, how much people know? So, ignorance is a big issue. So, this conference serves as a purpose. But apart from addressing ignorance, you need to actively plan against it. So, ignorance for not planning is inexcusable, right? So, uh, I think media, the fourth estate, has a lot of critical and crucial role in the development of any country, uh, which we have been doing very well in terms of promoting the challenges, the impact, the implication of Industry 4.0. Um, how do we prepare? It depends on what we want to do in life, right? So, likewise, for organisation as well. Some organisations have big plans, uh, but therefore, they also need to know that in their physical economy where they are thriving now, it doesn't translate into successes if you become myopic and still stick with your physical economy. Why? Because the digital economy is growing 10 times faster. So even if you are doing okay and maintain 5% to 10% growth in your physical economy, in no time, because the, free, the digital economy is growing bigger than you, you will become a very small player. And I always say this, and I will, I will keep repeating until people do not want to hear this. A young lady renting a place in Rosale. Why renting? Don't have money to buy. If she get a business model correct and the idea correct, she can take on the biggest of boys, not in Mauritius, only around the world, and win. Industry 4.0 is a great democratizer and a great leveler of opportunities. Everybody now start equally. So, so you mean like a small country like Mauritius uh, has no complex vis-a-vis uh, -vis like big countries like uh, America or European countries or Asian countries? Yes and no. If you look at the blueprint we crafted uh, for companies and, and, and countries, we discovered there are five things uh, that we need to consider. But among the five things will be investment. So the same question is true. Forget about Industry 4.0 for, for the time being. Your brick and mortar, uh, physical economy, do you also have to consider investment? Yes. So it has nothing to do with Industry 4.0. So in the physical economy, how do you grow, uh, taking what you have and look at opportunity and divert your, your investment into those growth areas? Nothing changes in Industry 4.0. You need to focus on the area of growth, but you need to do it differently. Right? Because with the event of the ninth pillar in Industry 4.0, you can do things faster, you can integrate. The greatest challenge is you need to massively collaborate. Uh, for people that used to think in physical economy, you've got enemies, you've got competitors, I suggest that we start thinking how to collaborate with your enemy. As uh, a lot of people say, bring your friend close, but bring your enemy closer. So that's how to survive in industry for Professor Jerry, you're the Vice Chancellor at the University of Mauritius. Uh, please tell us, uh, at the university, innovation, research, and uh, the need to develop entrepreneurs is a very important segment in uh, the education uh, program at uh, the university. Please tell us more how Industry 4.0 relates to this mismatch. This conference on Industry 4.0, I think, is, is very important. It's important because it helps us reflect on where the world is moving. Uh, and as the university is uh, a, f a full part of the system, uh, I think it's very important that uh, we also participate fully into the reflection of how we drive Industry 4.0. You know very well that the, that the university from the past and a half year now has been uh, actively involved in developing relationship with the private sector and the, and, the, and the public sector through that triple helix. We think that innovation is very important. And this is, we came up with a vision of uh, having a research engaged and entrepreneurial university. So to accompany this vision, which is about moving research and moving entrepreneurial activities uh, to support innovation, to accompany that vision, uh, it's obvious that the teaching has to change. We cannot uh, rely on what we refer to as classroom 1.0, where the teacher is at the center of, uh, of the classroom. 
we need to go towards uh, uh, the, the, the 2.0 system. In big universities, they're already talking of, uh, at NUS, for example, already talking of uh, uh, classroom 3.0. That is, total interaction, uh, student at the center of the learning process. Uh, we don't have the means to jump to the 3.0, but at least we have to make an effort to go to the 2.0, which means that the learner is at the center. We, do not, we no longer have that traditional classroom type where everybody sits down in the classroom and uh, waits for uh, you know, the, the, the lecturer or the teacher to deliver everything. This is where we have that kind of spoon feeding in our country. We have to get away from that and give the learner, especially at the university, give the learner the opportunity to develop independent learning. We are trying to do this as from this year. We're trying to develop flipped classrooms where the students will be in the classroom, the, the lecturer acts as a facilitator and not digest everything for uh, the student. The student will be encouraged to develop independent learning. We hope we can do this by transiting to what we call the European Credit Transfer System, uh, where the students will have the, the chance of uh, doing their learning by themselves. We think that this is important, but we're not only uh, relying on, on the structural change. We're also uh, looking forward to embed in our uh, different uh, programs entrepreneurship, innovation, soft skills. Uh, as you know very well, Industry 4.0 is not only about knowledge. Industry 4.0 is, uh, uh, is, is also about you know, using that knowledge and applying the knowledge. And, uh, so along with this, there's a the number of uh, uh, different things that we have to make sure that our students are fully equipped, like moving from the traditional learning process to a more problem-based learning. Uh, you know, putting uh, it as mandatory that when our students are doing assignments, they have to go through uh, the Turnitin, which is a kind of, uh, which checks whether people are plagiarizing or not, or, or just copying and pasting. So all these things are very important to develop creativity, to develop innovative skills uh, uh, in the students. So this is how we're moving these things forward, along with uh, a lot of other things that we're doing you know, side by side to develop uh, entrepreneurial skills through incubators uh, in, in the uh, emerging technologies, digital printing or 3D printing and so on, but also uh, in, for example, through the Agritech Park. Uh, you have spoken how the University of Mauritius is improving in terms of management and the day-to-day -day running, especially for classes and courses. Uh, but how is the university addressing uh, what is required to match the gap uh, in terms of Industry 4.0, uh, in terms of the courses that are being offered? Yeah, uh, well, when we talk of 4.0, uh, some countries have a, a clear strategy on how to move uh, you know, the whole country to 4.0. Uh, we can't do that piecemeal. It's not uh, you know, one institution deciding to do things to move to 4.0. Uh, I, I think it's a whole strategy that has to be put in place and the proper structure uh, has to accompany uh, that, uh, that strategy. Uh, when uh, we we are doing a lot, uh, if I can answer your question, uh, we are doing a lot to address skills mismatch. That is, we are addressing industry's needs. How do we do that? Uh, we are working a lot with industry directly to develop programs. Uh, a lot of examples uh, uh, can, be, can be given. Uh, I can give you the example that, uh, that, uh, where, where we have developed uh, master's programs uh, with Accenture, for example, company where we're responding to, spe to specific needs of that company in the IT sector. We will do that with other companies in, in the month to come, in the weeks to come. Uh, we'll be signing uh, agreements with other uh, companies in the IT sector to develop, uh, you know, to uh, sort of develop programs that respond specifically to their needs. Uh, we're also developing other programs in the banking and finance sector with banks again, to respond to the banking needs. So this is how we are uh, trying to address uh, you know, the, the skills mismatch. We are inviting private sector. This is very new. 
inviting private sector to come on campus and to establish, uh, for example, Accenture has got a lab on campus. So having a lab on campus where the students can come and work on campus is, means a very close relationship with industry. This is the only way we can address those sort of skills mismatch. Dave Smith, you come from Silicon Valley. This is the heart where all technological developments are being made every day. And we see now technology is taking a very important place in our daily lives, being in any field. Is there a risk that uh, machines will take over humans? Is there a myth about that or is there a truth about that? I think the, the right way to think about this is um, there is a wave of tech, in fact there are multiple waves of technology um, that are merging and converging and evolving all simultaneously. So biological systems, data analytics, mobile networks, all of these things are evolving at a pace that's difficult for most people to assimilate um, as quickly as the innovations occur. I, I guess the thing that uh, to keep in mind is that at the end of the day, humans will still be the center of all these innovations. Even when we talk about big data, the whole point of big data in, in, in dealing with data sets that are too large to be handled with traditional database technology it, is it's really focused on human behavior. Human behavior involves complexity that happens to generate a lot of data. So I think pe the thing people really need to keep in mind is that we're still going to be relevant. We're still going to be at the center of the motivation and the purpose for all of this innovation. So Now we are talking about the new generation which is uh, using these new technologies and we wanted to know their lives turned around that. How do you get them, get this human touch while educating them? How do you introduce this way of behaving and what changes do you see coming next? Oh, well, many of them um, are preparing themselves in the technologies and the devices that they adopt and that they seem to acquiesce to using uh, quite readily. But I think it's important regardless of what field young people decide they want to go into, whether it's medicine or law, they're going to be impacted, they're going to be affected by technology. So I think it's important that at an early age, an early journey, in the early part of the educational journey uh, that students are exposed to information technology, computer science, engineering, and get a sense of what it's all about. So it's not so mysterious. And not being so mysterious takes, I think, some of the, some of the fear and mystery uh, out of it and helps them adapt to the emerging marketplace. Because the emerging marketplace is going to reward people who not only have the core skills for whatever specialization uh, that they're pursuing, but are also able to incorporate these technologies into the workflow. That's going to be very important. Now, with new technologies, all barriers are practically broken. We don't have uh, a barrier of time. Mm -hmm. We don't have uh, this barrier of distance. Mm -hmm. We can do business from any place in the world, yes. which means also there's a uh, exchange of data which goes around the world which yes. is being exchanged and what about security for data protection? Uh, the never-ending task. <laughs> you know uh, security is like a cat and mouse game. For every measure there's a countermeasure and for every countermeasure there's a counter countermeasure. Um, ultimately it's going to come down to people understanding in being aware of the implications of using this technology. There's no such thing as privacy as we once understood it. If you're using any kind of technology that's connected to the internet or connected to electronic devices, people have to be aware of that and adjust their behavior accordingly. And I think the biggest challenge is for young people to understand that because they were born into a time where they were handed this technology without any real counseling or guidance on the implications of not respecting the privacy 
shortfalls, I mm -hmm. should say. Do you fear or do you think someday people might lose this human touch, humanity? I mean, now today we're communicating through mobiles, Facebook, yes. or uh, uh, WhatsApp, or all those devices. I mean, there's the, we lack this human touch. What can be done? Can can be done about that? While teaching, we're teaching. You're teaching about computers and all that. Can we introduce some kind of uh, human touch and also in this pedagogical uh, uh, way uh, of doing things? That's a very good question. And um, boy, I, I wish I had a ready answer f for that. It's actually a bit scary when you um, when you just walk around and you observe people interacting with these devices as opposed to talking to the person sitting right next to them. I've even seen families in restaurants um, where the mom, the dad, the children are all engaged in their devices rather than engaging uh, with each other. I think it'll take a little bit of time, but I think as these things go, the cycles come full circle and people will uh, reach a certain inflection point and turn the devices off and get back to talking to each other. But it's going to take a little time because they've got to get past the, the, the fascination of these devices and what they can do and, and realize that there's no substitute for actual human interaction. Jean-Michel Félix, you are the CEO of MCB Consulting. Uh, we now speak of uh, Industry 4.0, Banking 4.0. So what are all these changes? What's happening? Why is it all important to your group? Right. I think the first thing we should say is that whatever the number we want to associate to uh, the involvement of, of uh, technology or industry, change is always constant. Uh, we need to adapt ourselves because the world is changing. If you see a picture of a car 100 years ago, you see a picture of a train 100 years ago, uh, but you will see how much change has been disruptive, sometimes change has been positively disruptive, and sometimes it's been negatively disruptive. So whether we like it or not, we need to adapt, sometimes uh, anticipate changes for, to, for us to, to have a better life, whether it is from a business perspective or from an individual perspective. And now from a consulting perspective, how, how does it work for you? Right. Um, the first thing is that uh, we are a consulting company, but most and most of our business is outside Mauritius. In fact, uh, more than 95% of our turnover is outside Mauritius. And we work with totally different cultures. We have clients in Trinidad. We have clients in Palestine, we have clients in, in Cambodia, and we work a lot in Africa. We are indeed talking a lot about technological changes. Uh, clearly, this is very important. But us being a consulting company working with totally different cultures, we need to factor in um, every time the differences in culture because you will not be dealing uh, with someone in Palestine like someone in Cambodia or like someone in Trinidad. We really need to have at the center of our business model uh, different cultures. And this is, in fact, this is why we also, at, within MCB Consulting, have different cultures working on a day-to-day -to -day together so that they can better service our clients who are indeed across four different continents in the world. Ms. Asha Gungadin, uh, you're the corporate project manager at uh, the Sun Resorts. So we're speaking about Industry 4.0. How does this affect you in the hospitality sector? Okay, uh, in the hospitality sector where we deal with guests uh, day in, day out, uh, the Industry 4.0 is always leaning towards giving the best guest experiences to, to uh, the people who come to us. So we start from the pre-booking stage to the post-stay. And um, the aim is to be able to give uh, customer experiences right from the pre-booking stage so we can personalize uh, the guest stay in our resort. So uh, we start with an automation of booking where if the guest has been with us before, we can prompt uh, their preferences during the booking. Uh, then uh, get an idea of their likes and dislikes, if they have allergies, uh, we can record all of that so that when we come to the resort, we can personalize their stay. Uh, 
it also means that uh, the guest is able to choose whatever amenities they want in their rooms or whether they want any leisure activities. So Industry 4.0 goes towards bringing that additional touch of uh, personal experiences without the guest feeling that there's technology behind driving it. So we focus on customer experiences leveraged by technology. Does this mean that there is a lot of quality management involved in customizing the stays of each and every client? Yes, we go into the nitty gritty of planning personal experiences. So based on the data that we have gathered either from social media on the guests uh, or from the guest preferences from previous stay, we can already generate packages for them that they, they would wish to have with us. Investment in technology is a very important. Please share with us what are the changes that uh, you have gone through over the past few years? Okay, uh, so we've started with reorganizing our whole uh, processes and uh, our IT systems. We have put in place uh, a CRM that would be, uh, allow us to gather data and to be able to uh, do effective data mining so that we can generate preferences. We have also um, installed an ERP system that would allow us to capture uh, information, uh, billing information, get it uh, as fast as possible to the client. We have invested heavily in Wi-Fi and uh, mobile technologies so that uh, we can uh, personalize the guest stay or make it as easy as possible. We are investing heavily in digital marketing as well and we keep tracking our guest scores or pre uh, performance ratios so that we know that as soon as a guest is leaving or even before he comes what were his previous comments and how we can improve on that business connect that's it for this edition find this program on our website and also follow us on our facebook page we'll see you next time for another edition of business connected and it's goodbye